So the system configuration, um, this is just generally the uh, configuration to allow the system to boot correctly, load file systems, set up networking and so on. So let's have a look, System V or System 5 as it should be called, classic boot process. So it goes through um, what it's about, advantages, establish well understood system, easy to customize. I'd also add to that that it's just simpler, full stop, um, especially compared to System D. Uh, yes, it is slow to boot, but um yeah a medium base lfs system, ta system takes eight to twelve seconds to me like eight to twelve seconds is not a lot long time to wait for a computer to boot up it's i don't think that's a particular disadvantage um yeah obviously serial processing maybe st if stuff could be done in parallel um and as it says that uh, if there's a delay or something hangs, it will delay the entire boot process. So yes, that that is a dis dis disadvantage. Um, okay, so it does not directly support advanced features. And adding scripts requires manual static sequencing decisions. So yes, that can require some sort of knowledge of the system as to what order things go in. So I'd say on balance, the advantages are probably equal to the disadvantages. I'd, I'd probably disagree with this first one here as being a disadvantage. 8 to 12 seconds is nothing um, compared to what System D is capable of. Um, so that's a little bit about System V on System 5. So LFS boot scripts, let's extract them. And just to make install, it's done. Overview of device and module handling. So in chapter eight, we installed the UDEV daemon when UDEV was built. Before we go into the details regarding how UDEV works, a brief history of previous methods of handling devices in order. So there's some information there about how it used to be done and how it's done now with UDEV. So basically UDEV allows devices in the um, dev directory to be created on the fly as they're attached or found on the system. And mostly kernels, uh, modules are loaded automatically as well where they're needed. So as it says here, sometimes there are problems, a kernel module is not loaded automatically. Um, or it's not loaded automatically and UDEV is not intended to load it. Or UDEV loads a module that you don't want loaded, in which case you can blacklist them. Or it creates an incorrect device. So there's issues with UDEV, but there are ways around these problems and some reading there about it. Managing devices. Um, it says a traditional name scheme for using, for example, network interfaces is ETH0, ETH1, etc. Um, but the current way of doing it is to use like a hierarchy of the hardware where it appears on the bus and to prefix it with whatever device it is, so EN for uh, Ethernet devices and WL for wireless devices and then P5S0, I think there's a U as well can appear, is kind of a description of how it appears on the on the bus. So creating custom UDEV rules, the name scheme can be customised by creating UDEV rules, a script has been included that generates the initial rules, generate these rules by running this command here. So let's do that. Now inspect the etc dev rules 
the 70 persistent net rules file to find out which name was assigned to which network device. So let's do that. And you can see we've got this name here in P0 S31 S31 F6. So I'm going to make a note of that because I may well need that. Um, so that's ENP0 S31 F6. Okay. In some cases, when such as when a MAC address has been assigned to a network card manually or in a virtual environment such as QEMU or Zen, the network rules file may not be generated because the address is not as consistently assigned. In this case, the method cannot be used. Um. So it says if an issue happens where a custom new dev rule would rename some nick using a name already assigned to an alternative name of another nick, the new dev rule will fail. It gives you a, a bit of code here to resolve that. Uh, CD-ROM links, if you've got more than one CD-ROM drive, um, you can do stuff here. And do, dealing with duplicate devices as well, for example, uh, video card or webcam and tuner and so on. So general network configuration we'll need to put this in and edit it. So let's put that in. Oh that didn't completely copy correctly so let's try that again and I'm just going to cat that to make sure it did it correctly so I have config yep so now I'm going to edit that file and just adjust it so I'm going to change this interface to the one that I read which was ENP 0S31F6 and give it an IP address that will work on my network uh, so I'll call it 0 dot um, 123 for example gateway is 0, 01 and the broadcast will be 0255 So I'll just look at that again, make sure it looks right. And MP0, yep, that's correct. Then resolve.conf. So once again, I'm going to edit that file. It's probably easier to do and modify this script on the fly. So domain, I've got the domain set up, so it's called mynet.org. Otherwise just leave that blank or just put in anything. Name server, I'll use my own name server, which is at that address and I'll just leave that one blank. I'll just comment that out. So the host name, just the one liner. I'll call this LFS 12.2. Call that one up, but OK. 
keep to that hyphen. And then the fully qualified domain name needs to be put into the etc hosts file. So let's create that. And I'll need this name here, so I'll copy it to make sure I don't edit it or insert it incorrectly. So VI etc hosts. And I need to add it in here and here and it also is part of the FQDN and the fully qualified domain name is the host name followed by the domain so mynet.org and the same here Paste that in dot my net dot org. And then lastly, I just need to set the correct IP address. So 0123. Any other radiuses? No, there's no others, but I could call this computer something else if I wanted to. And I'll delete these lines because I don't use IPv6. So move on to system v boot script usage and configuration. So we need to create an init tab. And there's all about run levels there. And the system clock. So just copy that in. If you're sharing the computer with a Windows installation, you'll need to set that UTC to zero to say that the time is not stored in UTC because Windows stores local time in the um, CMOS clock, whereas Linux uses UTC and then just adjust the time depending on the localization that's used. Configuring the Linux console. So again, we can just copy this. So I'll copy this one here. Uh, we'll use C.UTF8 as a locale for interactive sessions in the Linux console. So we should set Unicode to 1. And the console font shipped by the KBD package containing the glyphs for all the characters from the program messages in the CUTF locale are okay. Other ship console fonts lack glyphs of some characters like the Unicode left right quotation marks and Unicode English dash. So set one of them, for example, in that term 16 as the default console font. Okay, so we'll just take this as a default then. Um, for non-Unicode setup, it tells you how to change it. Um, so we might need to set the key map to UK, I think. So let's modify that now. So I'll add in key map and put UK in there for UK keyboard. And uh, while I'm here, I'll also add in the logging level. Otherwise, we're getting too many, this log level, too many um, kernel messages appearing on the screen so I'll just set that to 3 I'll find is a good level to prevent too many messages I can't remember what the levels are but um, it will be things like um, emergency or critical messages that appear 
So this is some other examples there for different languages and so on. RC site files, just a file that you can inspect. There's generally nothing that needs to be altered there. Customizing the boot scripts, it tells you how to do that, how they work. Configuring the system locale. So we can find out what's supported. We should recognize these because we added these in when we installed GWC, all these locales. And to find your preferred locale, uh, you can just put this command in and substitute the locale that you want. So it says to pick one of these. So it says in their example, ENGB ISO 88591, which is that one there. So I'll use that as well, because that's what I would use. And it responds with this ISO 88591-1. And you can look up other uh, properties about that locale using these commands here. And then that information goes into the ETC profile. So if we copy this here like this and then insert this information here. So it'll be um, en underscore gb dot and the result of this output here. and then just copy the rest of that to complete the file. Move on to the etc input file, just copy and paste that. As it is. Just check that to make sure that did go in correctly because sometimes when you copy and paste it looks like it gets corrupted when it actually doesn't. So yeah, that looks okay at the end there. ETC shells file. This just tells any program that cares to look at this configuration what shells are installed on the system. 